So welcome everybody to our wonderful talk tonight. Um, I was trying to feel in like every month we do a uh, free webinar on healing and um, I was feeling into the talk tonight and uh, the kind of term that came to me was conscious healing. And I feel like it's a really good time right now, I think, to talk about consciousness because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff happening in our lives and uh, in the world. And um, healing is very much about bringing the unconscious into consciousness and uh, freeing and liberating the mind and heart. So um, thank you for joining tonight. And as we go through the talk, I'll unravel some concepts um, that I've learned in healing. And I hope that they can they can help you too. Um, I think the the first part, um, like I, I want to speak to is like I I also think as well as like conscious healing that there's like an unconscious accepting, and with the unconscious accepting, there's certain things that we often we get so familiar with, we get so used to repeating and experiencing that we start to just accept them and we don't even know that we're accepting them. They just become so familiar to us. And sometimes that's sickness. Sometimes we just accept a certain level of sickness that we have. And even though there's a part of us that doesn't want to be sick, sometimes for some people, I mean, I've treated people who've been sick for 30 years. And so there's definitely, a, you know, even, even though they want to get better, there's a certain part of them that that is accepting that and that is... Um, experiencing that over and over again like a like a hamster on a wheel going around and around and as well as like sickness uh, I think pain is a very common one uh, sometimes you but people will just accept that they've got pain in their body or that pain has become kind of like normal for them you know it's it's become normalized and even though they're doing their best to get out of pain and they're doing their best to get better and they're they're doing all the things that they think they're supposed to do. There's often a like an acceptance of like, oh, that that's never going to go away. It's just like it's there. And and as well as sickness and pain, I think that there's also an acceptance of suffering. <laughs> you know, we're, we're often taught that, you know, people have to suffer. It's part of life. Suffering is part of life. And um, and I think in fairness, we all know how to suffer and we all we've all experienced suffering. I don't think that there's anybody that hasn't been touched with suffering, you know? So there's a certain amount of suffering that is, uh, that is um, part of the life experiencing. And then there's a certain amount of suffering that we do unto ourselves, which is more what I'll talk to tonight. And um, there's also an unconscious accepting of, of lack, you know, lack of, support, lack of help, lack of finances, lack of friends, lack of community. Um, there's a certain amount of things that we get to a certain point in life and we just accept that's how things are. And also accepting of the polarities like that, you know, um, things are very polarized, right? Even the world that we live in is very polarized. The countries that people live in are very polarized. Um, there's a lot of polarization, opposed opinions. And we sometimes can kind of like, again, unconsciously just accept, oh, this is just how things are. And it's like, it can feel like they're getting worse. This polarization is like being pushed out both sides. And there can be a certain amount of, I would call it like unconscious accepting, like that this this is just how things are. And, and um, I think through my practice of bioenergy healing, I've had the, the good fortune or the good opportunity to be able to help people over the last 30 years. And um, one of the things that I found is that um, like everybody has the ability to heal. It's, it's something that's innate inside all of us. You know, everybody has the ability to heal. And not only do we have the ability to heal, every single person has the ability to heal other people. It's it comes with the package. <laughs> Let's just say it, co it comes as part of the whole process. Right. And so um, 
I've, like I said, I've had the good opportunity to be able to like help people tap into their healing ability to be able to use their hands to help heal other people as a more of a hands off healing than a hands on healing. And, um, and having this exchange of, which we'll talk about later too, is this exchange of energy that takes place between people where, where our energy goes to where we give our attention and where that can actually be used to, to heal either ourselves or heal other people. So we'll, we'll get to unravel that a little bit tonight. So bear with me. And, um, but I just want to create, set the context, first of all, set the con context for this concept of conscious healing, as opposed to unconscious accepting right like so that unconscious accepting as i said is more like we we start to accept things in our life from sickness pain suffering lack polarities and then conscious healing is where we start to bring how would i say it like um the, the best way i would say it like when i'm doing healing groups i always encourage everyone to slow down Right. Like to just to, the first thing to do with healing is always just slow down, because when we're sometimes when we're moving like fast, both in our minds and our hearts, like we're moving fast. We go through these like unconscious um, replays, like unconscious reactions, unconscious habits, and we're just repeating the same stuff over and over and you know, we can all we can all laugh and say, well, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Right. And we all know that is the definition of insanity. Right. That, you know, expecting things to change when we're doing the same thing. And that's, you know, maybe it is maybe a little bit crazy because nothing's going to change if we keep repeating the same patterns. And I think that the speed at which we move like true life, the speed at which we process things and we we experience life is sometimes like the speed at which we're moving is faster than what we're often able to process. And I think it's slightly different for everyone. I often think of like even with healing, some people are like a uh, like a slow cooker. <laughs> they need longer to process their healing. And then other people are maybe a a fast kind of oven and they're um they process a little quicker and and then there's the, the microwave people that you know go through their healing very quickly and ding i'm done <laughs> you know but there, and there's everything in between right so we're we all process our healing in different ways and different levels but i think that one of the things i found was like that when people are moving faster than they're able to process they're generally not processing. That's that's the that's the point I guess I'm making. And um, uh, welcome, Angeline. Good to see you. And so, thank you everyone for joining. And um, yeah, when people so when people are like processing, they're trying to process, but they're moving at the same speed that they were moving at. Then they generally go back to the same habits and patterns that they were previously in. And in bioenergy, we call that looping, you know, so you're looping back into the past all the time. Past experiences are creating your future. And so in healing, I often think it's about disrupting the patterns, right? Like we have to do something different than what we've been doing. We have to interrupt the patterns and interrupt the process. And I think one of the things that I always hammer home in like my teachings and trainings and everything from group sessions, all of it, you'll hear me say the same thing. We got to slow down. But there's a reason behind that. Like the reason we got to slow down is when we slow down, we're able to process what's happening. We're able to connect with our body. We're able to connect to what we're feeling inside. We're able to um recognize where we're holding stuck emotion in their body right you're able to recognize where there's pain in your body right like sometimes people are moving so fast they don't notice the pain in their body sickness in their body and then they get a diagnosis and they're like where did that come from 
right? Like, you know, or someone gets a heart attack and they're like, where did that come from? Well, it didn't come from nowhere and it didn't come out of the blue. It's like your body gives you lots of signals before you get sick. Like that's 30 years of doing healing. I can guarantee you nobody just gets sick. Your body gives you lots of warnings, lots of signals, lots of messages. But so many people, when they get sick, they're like, oh, this is out of the blue. And I'm like, really? Was it really out of the blue? You know, and we started talking about like what was happening in their life and in their health, you know, before them getting sick. And there was lots of signals there. There was lots of messages there. But as I said, people are going too fast. They don't notice it, you know. And so that's I always like that as a like slowing down. Breathing is always a good one, right? Like breathe. Why? Because you can't breathe in the future and you can't breathe in the past. <laughs> the only place you can breathe is now. And so breathing brings you into the now, right? Like that's, there's no other place to breathe from, only this now. And so as we start to slow down, we start to get out of the head a little bit and we start to connect with the breathing, you, you start to, you start to, like connect with more than just the external processes, more than what's happening in the outside world, right? And in that slowing down that connection, you begin, you can begin to recognize things. And I think one of the things that as people like slow down and they get into healing, they start to recognize that we're more than just a physical body. We're more than just this physical body, cells, a clump of cells and organs and tissues and blood and bones, that we're so much more than that. And that, we, yes, we have our physical body and we, we have amazing physical bodies that do so much for us and, and it wants to keep us healthy and it wants to keep us well. But there's there's more to it than that. And, and in bioenergy healing, we we would specifically say, it's very much about holistic health, right? And, and what does that mean, holistic health? It means body, mind, and spirit, you know, not, not any one of them separately, but all of them together. And as we slow down and we connect with the body, we realize the body doesn't stop with your physical body. It doesn't stop with physical illness or physical sickness that it goes so much more beyond that to the point where you you are energy all of us each one of us is energy we're we're pure energy and there's layers of this energy and just as you have the physical body which is a physical layer of the energy you also have the emotional body which is an emotional layer of the energy and you have the mental body which is a mental layer of the energy and in fact, like in terms of like the layers of the body, we say you have seven layers of your body, which are also known as seven chakras. So the root chakra, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the brow and the crown. These are terms that I'm pretty sure you've heard before. They're quite common now, quite popular. So the seven major chakras of the body relate to seven specific areas of your body, seven specific areas of your life, and seven layers of energy out around your body. And this, this energy flows and moves and circulates. And it's, it has a way of, when it's flowing freely, your body is in a state of healing. Oh, isn't that good, <laughs> right? Simple, when your energy is flowing freely, your body is in a state of healing. And so um, when the energy gets blocked or disrupted or isn't flowing well, over time, it, do it doesn't make you sick straight away, but over time, it, as it starts to clog up and the energy stops moving and circulating and flowing, over time we become ill, over time we become sick. So the layers move from the outer layers of the auric field into the la inner layers of the auric field. And the last layer of your auric field is your physical body. So that's why I say like that, um, there's opportunities to get rid of illness and get rid of sickness 
before it becomes apparent in your body where now it becomes so physical, so tangible that now you're having to work really hard to get rid of it. So um, by the time people get sick, it's, you got to go through the whole process to get it back out of the layers of the energy field. Because even if you just take illness out of the physical body, what tends to happen is it just comes back again, right? And has anybody experienced that, right? <laughs> like sometimes things that you think you got rid of and they come back around again. And then you think you got rid of them and they come back around again. And so I've often thought, well, the real test of healing, right? The test of healing is if you treat something and it doesn't come back again, wouldn't that be the test, right? Wouldn't that be a sign that you're getting to the cause, that you're not just treating the effect? And so traditionally in, in medicine and pharmaceuticals, it's very much just treating the effect, eliminating the effects, getting rid of the effects, you know, and not really getting to the cause of things. Does that make sense, first of all? Yeah, sweet. Let me just pause for a drink of water. Ooh. Thirsty work, all this talking. So as we slow down and we start to connect with the body and we start to connect with the layers of the energy field, like I said, there's a slowing down, there's the connecting, there's recognizing, you start to recognize, hey, I'm really stressed about this situation. And you may not have recognized how stressed you are about something. And that stress often shows up before the illness. And if you can identify that stress and where it's coming from, you know, that can really help so much. Another, another part too is like when we have unprocessed emotions, unprocessed emotions often turn into illness and sickness, you know? And uh, there, was, there was a really, uh, there was a funny part in a movie. Uh, I can't think what the name of the movie was, but it was a Woody Allen movie. And um, he, he, hear, he goes home from work early and he, he hears some noise upstairs in the bedroom. And in the movie, he's married to, I think it was like Bette Midler in the movie. And so he goes upstairs, he calls out her name, she doesn't answer, and he goes upstairs to the bedroom. And so uh, Woody Allen goes into the bedroom, his bedroom, and he finds like his wife, Bette Midler, is in bed with somebody else. And uh, he just, he, he pauses for a while and he's like looking at her and uh, she stops her business, what she's doing. And uh, so does the guy. And she looks at him and uh, he looks at her and then he turns around and he walks away and Bette Midler in her fashion jumps out of the bed and she calls after him and she says, are you not going to say anything? You know, are you not going to get angry? And uh, it was this, this one classic line that I thought was so, so good. And the line that, that Woody Allen responded with, with, I don't get angry. I get a tumor. And I thought, wow, that was, so, that was such a clever like little drop into the movie right there. And as someone who's worked with healing for 30 years, like that makes a whole lot of sense to me, right? When people don't get angry, they get a tumor. So when we have unprocessed emotions, right? They, they have to go somewhere. Right. And they they solidify, they condense and they freeze and they become something. And, that, and that's why it's not uncommon that left untreated, left unhealed, the things that we ignore, the things that we suppress, unfortunately, they can over time become illness and sickness. Now, I say unfortunately, and then at the same time, you know, um, I would also say fortunately, because it, it's not like we have stuck anger or resentment or guilt or shame or blame and we're immediately sick. There's lots of time in between. There's lots of time to turn your health around before you get sick. There's lots of time to, to heal before you need healing, right? Like people often think, well, I'll get healing when I need it. Well, it's just like servicing your car, right? Like, you know, you don't wait till your car breaks down before you bring it to the mechanic. 
right? That would that would be a bit crazy, right? You wait till everything goes wrong and the car like smoke is coming out of the engine and the car is like chunk, 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 and then it comes to a standstill. And then you're like, okay, now I'm gonna bring it to the mechanic because now I'll get my money's worth, you know. And so when people think of healing, they're often like, Well, I'll just do it myself. And if I get sick, then I'll go to a healer and then I get my money's worth, you know. But it's like, it's so much more than that. It's like, we'll, we'll spend more on our car than we will on our own health. We'll, we'll think more about maintaining something outside of us than we will about maintaining and supporting our own amazing, magical body, our own health and well-being, you know. And so, uh, yeah, the, the process of, of healing is helping people see the value and the importance of taking care of themselves holistically, right? And again, what is that? Well, it's body, mind, and spirit, which encompasses all the layers of your, of your human biofield. So this human biofield is another way of where the energy that you have around you interacts with your body and communicates to your body and it's it really it's a blueprint for your health and so if your biofield the, the simple version i give you today is that if your biofield is flowing freely and uninterrupted you can pretty much rest assured that you're pretty healthy and if your biofield is full of blockages and congestion and isn't flowing well, it's pretty much guaranteed that if it like if it's been blocked and clogged for a long time, it, you're you're gonna get sick in one way or another. And you can even identify how people will get sick because based on where the energy gets blocked in their body, in the chakra system, so in the auric field and the chakra system of the body, wherever the person is holding emotion or like unpressed or repressed emotion in their body, depending upon what area they're holding it in their body, that will relate to specific ailments and sickness showing up in their body, you know? And it's, so it's really like, it's really fascinating because you can actually start to like unravel your body and, and, bring out that suppressed emotion out of your body and one of the one of the best ways like for healing is always acknowledgement right <laughs> acknowledging your wounds acknowledging your pain acknowledging your suffering you know when people say well i don't have any problems you know yeah that there's a there's also um a river in egypt <laughs> right denial you know do you see how i did that <laughs> you know but <laughs> The, uh, you know, it's not uncommon that we get into denial about like, oh, no, I don't have any problems. Oh, but then where did this illness and sickness come from? And it's like, you know, it's like about being authentic with ourselves, being real and like slowing down and acknowledging back the world, the world, even the world that we live in right now. Like, does anybody think that, you know, we're going through a lot, right? <laughs> Did anybody think like that when you signed up for the life journey that this would be it in 2024 unfolding the way that it is, right? Like, I mean, I didn't, but I think like it would be fair to say that, would it, would it be fair to say at least that life is a little bit crazier and has been getting crazier over the last four years, right? Like, would it, could it, would it be true to say that, that, there's what's happening inside of us and then there's what's happening outside of us and what's happening outside of us without going into a whole lot of things we could certainly acknowledge that the world is just a little bit crazy and uh it can be a little bit challenging and it can be um I think that's the summary of it. I think crazy is a good world, a good word for the world, right? It's it's just a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit, a little bit crazy. And so, um, you know, over the years when I've been like doing healing for people and working with people's health, often people would see, well, the reason why they're sick, you know, people would always see it as it's something outside of them. 
you know, well, the reason, Michael, the reason I have back pain is because I was in a car accident and a car crashed into me and I hurt my back. And that's why I had back pain for 10 years. And, you know, I, I think that's a fair statement, right? Like a car crashes into you and you get your back injured. Um, and I, I think that part is fair. But if you're still sick after 10 years, if you still have back pain after 10 years, I don't think it's the car anymore. I don't think, and you might say, yeah, but Michael, this was a physical injury. This, this is like a real problem. This isn't one of your energy healing hocus pocus things. This, this is like, my, I had x-rays and I, mine is a real problem. Like, are you able to treat real problems? And what I found is like that, when people have been sick for, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you now. Are you ready for this one? When people are be are sick for more than fifteen minutes, boom, more than fifteen minutes. There's an emotional attachment to it. There's an emotional attachment. Now, uh, maybe I shouldn't have thrown that out because that's that we could do a whole talk on just that one concept. But uh, but let me just kind of back up a little bit and just say like that. What I found is like if if you still have back pain after ten years, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say like that. It's often that there's suppressed emotions still in the body, and what I found is that when we go into healing and people start releasing their healing, and they start like they start slowing down, connecting with their body and start to recognize what's going on inside their body, the most common thing that re people recognize is that they're often still angry on the inside. They're angry at that person driving through a red light. They're angry that the person was maybe drink driving or T-boned them or, you know, didn't stop. And, and even though, and here, here's the interesting part, your body has this phenomenal ability to heal itself. Everybody can heal themselves. You cut yourself, your body heals it. You bruise yourself, your body heals it. Your body even heals broken bones, right? So why isn't your back pain healing? Because you're, you haven't let go of the accident. You haven't let go of the situation at an emotional level. You haven't purged it. You haven't released it. And in many cases, you haven't felt it. And so in healing, what healing does is working holistically, it works through the layers of the energy field, peeling them away like an onion, right? And as it starts to peel away the layers, it gets down to the core, like just like the core of the onion, it gets down to where the, where the energy is still blocked, where the energy is stuck. And there's no... There's no real significant difference between physical, emotional, or mental block in the energy system. They're all the same thing, you know? So in terms of like, in terms of when, when the energy is blocked, it's really just a matter of time before that blockage continues to permeate through the whole system. So in the same way, like a, like a traffic jam, like originally it's just blocking up one road, it'll later block up the other roads if it's not cleared. And so when you get down to the core of like often in terms of back pain, when people release that emotion of the accident, you know, then suddenly their back pain heals up and it can heal really fast. And people are often like, yeah, but I've I've gone to chiropractors, I've gone to physio, I've gone to massage for 10 years. And how can someone waving their hands around, not touching me, get rid of my back pain in four sessions? And it blows people's minds. It just blows their mind. And not, on, not only can people help you get rid of your back pain and get rid of your illness and sickness, but we can also show you how to do it yourself. We can also show you how to do it for other people because it's natural. It's the most natural thing that there is because your body is always regenerating, always renewing itself, always replenishing itself. And that's the basis for health is that your body is always healing when it's in the right state. 
And when your body's not in the right state, then it's not in the healing process. And so even though the body is regenerating, it's regenerating while imprinting the past forward. So your body imprints the stuck emotions into the new tissues and cells that are being formed. And so this is why it doesn't really matter how much time goes by. Like as much as time is a healer and we can all accept that. And that's a beautiful statement. You know, time is a healer. And there's a lot of truth in that. At the same time, you know, if you keep doing what you've always done, you keep getting what you've always gotten. So time is a healer if you're healing, right? But time is not a healer if you're not healing. So when people say to me, Michael, it takes a long time to heal. I really have to question that because I don't know that it does. I think if it's taken you a long time to heal, you're probably not healing. I'm sorry, boom, there. You're probably not, and you're like, yeah, but I'm doing all these sessions with all these practitioners or, you know, I've done all of this work and I'm like, well, that's great. But it's like, it's like, you got to see the results, right? Like if you're not seeing the results, then that's probably your evidence, right? Like it's probably your evidence. You don't need me to, to tell you. It's like self-evident. If you slow down and you connect and you recognize you may recognize that sometimes what you're doing is not working. And when you recognize that, and then the next step, of course, is acknowledging that. Oh, you know, and that's okay because sometimes we get, sometimes we feel guilty or we feel like, we feel regret for the things that we have done that haven't worked. But you know, everything in life is always like, Life is always giving us opportunities, right? It doesn't mean that we take hold of them. It doesn't mean that we use them. But life is always giving us opportunities. And, you know, sometimes like when a practitioner shows up in your life, it's given you the opportunity to focus on your health, you know. And even if it doesn't get you to where you need to be, sometimes it's like, I often think like, uh, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like the person in the crowd that when people pass the bottle around, you know, the bottle where the lid won't open and people pass it around and it gets to me and I take the lid off. And I, I feel like that person sometimes, I don't know if it's just like lucky being Irish, but it's just like, it's, it's like um, everything that we do prior is maybe helping us on some, in some way, right? And then at the same time, it's also like there, we're still on some deep level. There's something inside of us, in, in everyone, that we don't want to suffer, right? Like deep down, like whether it's physical illness or sickness or pain. But I think more than that, I think that, you know, people suffer emotionally, people suffer mentally, and that's every bit as bad as physical illness and sickness, you know, and the quality of your thinking, the quality of your thoughts will determine the quality of your life. Isn't that true? Right? <laughs> like the quality of your, the quality of the words that you speak, like how you speak to things, like even the words that you speak are casting spells, they're creating. Like a lot of times, I feel like people are listening to this talk today, be it on Instagram or on Zoom. I feel like, you know, when you're tuning into this, you're probably more aware of like conscious healing insofar as like you're aware of like thoughts create, right? Like your thoughts create things. There isn't anything, there isn't anything that doesn't get created without thought, right? Like we think about things and then they happen. We think about things and then we, we start to like, have feelings about them and we start to take actions for them and then we make things happen. But everything begins with thought. And then from thought, we start to get into the feeling, right? Like wh whether we feel something can happen or something can't happen. But when we speak things, when we speak words, like so many times we're speaking from the past. 
And it's like, it's in the, in the very first level of bioenergy, like we have different levels of bioenergy, kind of level one is introduction training. Level two is our main course of practitioner training. Level three is advanced training and level four and five are teacher trainings. But right to the very beginning of the, the bioenergy system, the level one training, which is learning healing for you to put, you know, help back in your hands to bring healing into your family and your friends. The very first level of healing is really bringing it. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> it was on the tip of my tongue, but it fell off. Let me see if it comes back to me. Sorry, I was getting I was getting so excited <laughs> Build, building it up that I forgot it. But um, uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'll come back in a moment, you know, but um, in, in any case, uh, the the level one is like putting help back into our own hands and recognizing that we have the capacity to heal ourselves. We have the capacity to get out of our own way and to, to activate our own chakra system, to activate our own energy system, and to bring that level of health and well-being into our body and into our lives. And so many times, like, again, we're going like unconsciously repeating the same patterns, repeating the same habits. And as we start to unhook ourselves, I like, you know, if looping is repeating the same thing unconsciously, then unhooking ourselves is taking us out of the unconscious patterns. You know, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> it, it was actually, it was about like how we speak things into existence. And it was like that when we speak, we're casting spells. Like the the words that we use they create and we're either creating from the past <clears throat> when we keep regurgitating the past we're creating our limitations in the past or we're speaking through the present and creating but if we're not uh, sorry just adding some people in here but if we're not recognizing that the way that we're speaking that the way that we're thinking is caught up in the past, is caught up in regrets, is caught up in grief or sadness, you know, we're going to be more likely to be suffering with depression, right? The more we're caught up in the past and we're not recognizing it, and we keep looping ourselves back into the past with the way that we think, the way that we speak, and of course, the way that we feel, the emotions they link together and they keep pulling us back into the old way of being. And so in healing, we have to interrupt that pattern. We have to interrupt the looping and we have to unhook ourselves from repeating the past forward. You know, and in the level one bio, we always say that we're always standing in a field of infinite possibility. Oh, isn't that good? I like that. We're always standing in a field of infinite possibility. Basically where anything can happen. But there's two, two things that often happens. Excuse me. We drop down into fear or we raise into love. And when we drop down into fear, the emotions that we feel, which is usually, you know, fear, <laughs> anger, guilt, shame, blame, grief, regrets, we drop into these like frequencies, we keep ourselves trapped in the past. And, and we keep these, these unprocessed emotions, they keep coming back to haunt us like a ghost, right? You, you don't need a ghost in your house. You have one, it's you. You keep haunting yourself, right? You know, and, and that's to me, that's what suffering is, right? Suffering, like I love helping people get out of pain. I, I don't think for me, there's any better thing than helping people get out of pain. But I think it's more than just helping people get out of pain. You know, I, I think that there's a spiritual side to it, that it's more than just physical healing. And it's even more than emotional healing. 
And it's more than healing your mind. And it's more than getting your throat chakra speaking in a healthy way. It's, it's a, a spiritual unfoldment. It's a spiritual return to love. It's, it's a return back to your authentic self. It's a return back to al alignment and your light. Or another term for that would be your Christ consciousness. It's a return to your light body. And really, that's what this energy system is. This energy feels and the chakras and the aura, they're a light body. And when the light body is working well, that's why we're healthy. Because when it's working well, we're in alignment. And when the light body is not working well, it's generally because we feel pulled out of alignment. Doing things that we don't want to be doing. You know, meeting expectations on us that are sometimes challenging. I was I was teaching a level two training today and I was sharing a concept um, with them. And the concept just a, it's a very simple concept, but it's um, I think it's quite profound. Would you like me to share it with you? Yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> you know, so um, uh, they won't want me sharing this golden nuggets because they're getting lots on their on their training course. But th this is just a very simple, a very simple golden nugget, not to be confused with a chicken nugget, equally good. But this golden nugget is just like that. It takes a lot of energy to maintain your ego. It takes a lot of energy to maintain the identity of the ego. And it uses up a lot of your energy. But it takes no energy to be yourself. Fireworks, <laughs> right? It takes no energy to be your authentic self. But it takes a lot of energy to be the ego. And what is the ego? The ego is our wounds. It's the wounds that we carry from childhood. It's the wounds that we carry from the past. You know, it's the unprocessed stuff that we haven't released, that we haven't let go of, right? The identity that we're keeping up, it's like keeping up appearances. And so it, you know, I was just, I was sharing a kind of like a little concept today was that, um, like often people say to me, Michael, I'd love to learn healing, but I'd like to do it for animals. I don't want to work with people. And I say, well, why don't you want to work with people? And they say, I don't like people, <laughs> right? <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to be around people, right? And so when you feel like it takes a lot of energy to be around people, when you feel it's hard to be around people, it's probably because you're not being yourself. And it takes a lot of energy to keep up the appearances. Oh, right, right? That's what it takes. It takes a lot of energy to keep that ego, to keep that alive, right? And the ego is your protective mechanism, right? Like it's the protective shield to, to keep your wounds safely tucked away that no one triggers you, right? The ego doesn't want to be triggered, right? Because when you get triggered, it shows you that you have wounds and nobody wants to be wounded. Nobody wants to have wounds. Everybody's okay, right? Uh, there's even a book. I think there's a book that says, I'm okay, you're okay. <laughs> you know, everybody's okay. But really the world is pretty fucking crazy, right? And it, I think this is just me. I think it's okay if you're not okay. Just saying, just saying, just putting it out there. If you feel tired and exhausted and wondering when are you going to get a break with life? If you feel like, what the fuck is going on with the world? And when is it going to get better? Like, you know, if you feel like you're asking for all the guidance, all the love and all support. And when the hell is it going to come? If if you feel that the world is pretty friggin' challenging and that uh, you're not sure that this is what you signed up for. I think, I think if you feel somewhat unsettled, somewhat disturbed, I think you're probably okay. 
right? I think if you feel good and everything is great, I think there's probably something wrong with you. <laughs> I think you're probably not slowing down enough to see all the shit that's happening. You're probably, because you're not slowing down, you're not connecting with yourself and your intuition and your awareness of what's taking place. And because you're not slowing down and you're not connecting, you're not recognizing. You're not recognizing. Like I often talk to people about stuff that's happening in the world. And they're like, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, how did you not know that? <laughs> right? Like it's in your face, you know? And it's like, where people are moving too fast. They're moving too fast to recognize what's right in front of their face, right? And so in terms of like, um, I was, I don't know, like we're, we're also like in eclipse season, right? And eclipses, like the general kind of sense of an eclipse is that they, they purge you, right? What does that, they clear you out. They're up leveling your vibration. They're changing your energetic frequency. You know, if you have a phone and they send out an, an update, right? They're going to update your phone. They, you know, what generally what happens is it puts your phone on pause. Your phone might even shut down and it updates your phone. So now an eclipse comes along and we get our, you know, just as technology gets updated, right? As technology advances, it's also very natural living on the earth as human beings with human energy fields. It's also really natural that we get updated, that our energy field gets updated in the same way that your nervous system builds res resilience and gets updated as you go through life. In the same way that your immune system gets viruses and the viruses update your body. Like viruses update your body. They make your body stronger, right? <laughs> you know, they're, they're part of the ecosystem. Like it's, you know, we've gone, we've gone a bit crazy in the last four years, right? Like afraid to get sick. The, there's a natural part of that, which is that it updates your system. It updates your, your technology, just as the, the phone and the computer and all the other technologies get updated, you know, um, you have technology inside of you that needs to get updated. And I remember like, like eclipse, eclipses are a real good one for updating your body. Full moons are good for updating you. They help to clear out the past and make way for the new moon, which is new opportunities and new ideas and fresh starts, <laughs> you know, the, the, Full moon is, again, another purger. It's like the full moon is going to like, you're going to feel like the things that you're not feeling are going to go on steroids and you're going to feel them more intensely. So when it comes to eclipses, when it comes to full moons, if if the full moon, like usually on a super moon, you might feel that even more stronger because your body is wanting to heal. Your body is always wanting to heal, Right. Your body is always wanting to heal. That's good news, by the way. <laughs> like good news, bad news, right? <laughs> it's it's always wanting to heal. That's good news. Uh, not always when you want. Maybe that's the bad news, right? Like you you put time aside for your healing and your body has a different plan, right? Like it it it's gonna up level, it's gonna upgrade. It's like when you're when you don't update your phone and it just shuts down and updates you like it interrupts the process. But sometimes our body, if we're not um, harmonizing with the planet, if we're not maintaining and sustaining our ecosystem, which is, a, which is another way of saying in bioenergy, we call it the vertical alignment, right? If you're not staying in alignment with your energy, you know, if you're coming out of alignment with your energy, you're coming away from your ecosystem. And the universe or nature or great spirit, whatever name you want to give it, will always find a way to bring you back to your center. And an interesting one recently was uh, on the other side of the, so we're coming in like 
tomorrow is the fourth of a four, the fourth of the fourth of 2024. So it's a it's it's called the 444 portal. So it's a quite a strong energy that's opening up right now. We also came off a um a lunar eclipse, and now we're moving into a solar eclipse on the 8th of April. So next Monday, I would say that is. Um, next Monday, we move into a solar eclipse. And that's that's one of the biggest transformational energies for, for up-leveling your energy system. So it's really good to be very conscious on that day about what you're doing. Like, really stay away from your bad habits and focus more on your intentions and what you want to bring forward because that's a real powerful energy. What you kind of like do on that day will often determine what happens over the next two years. That's how powerful it is, right? So take some time to breathe on that day, right? Take some time to slow down, connect, you know, recognize, acknowledge and 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 heal, right? Like on that day. Um, but in terms, I was just going to share a little thing with you was that on, um, so before the lunar eclipse, I kept waking up at three o'clock in the morning, right? Like, every month like and I, I don't wear watches I don't have clocks you know but I would wake up and I'm like I just wake up bong wide awake and um I I grabbed the phone to just see what time it was and it was like three o'clock and I did that because it's like the second day it happened and then it happened the third day and then the fourth day and it was like four days in a row three o'clock three o'clock three o'clock and so I did what any normal person would do I Google searched it. I was like, why am I waking up at three o'clock? And one of the first things that kind of popped up, has anybody else been waking up at like, like three o'clock in the morning or something like that, right? But this was very specifically three o'clock in the morning. It wasn't like 10 past three. It wasn't four, four, four. It was like three o'clock in the morning. And so the first thing I read was like, um, was like, it said something like, if you're waking up, if, I think it was some religious thing or some pastor or something. And he said, like, if you're waking up at three in the morning, God is calling you, you know. And I was like, I, I remember like looking at it and I was like, I, I was like, dear God, if you want to if you want to talk to me, can you call me at a reasonable hour? <laughs> like, come on three o'clock in the morning like I'm, I'm awake all the hours of the day like can we not like discuss things then like why three o'clock in the morning anyway that was my that was my funny wake up call you know but um it, it's hard to say why these things like happen why we like wake up at certain times but it, there's something pulling us right like and and i i really feel that in these past like especially these past four years that we're being pulled into healing. You know, now of course I'm doing healing. I've been in healing for 30 years, but I really feel and I really see and I really intuit that people are being pulled into their healing. I think it's getting harder and harder for people to keep the unpressed emotion in their body. Now, some people say it's all part of an ascension process, and an ascension process is that we're all up leveling to a new vibration and the world is changing. Some people think the world is splitting all different things like this. Like, look, who knows, right? Like the only thing that, that we know is this present moment. The only thing that we truly know is what's happening now. And what I do know what's happening now is that people are going through so much and it's getting harder and harder to, to deny it. It's getting harder and harder to reject it. It's getting harder and harder to dismiss it, right? And there's something that's getting louder inside the human being that's that's calling us into alignment, that's calling us like to return. And if if I meditate and I even if I sit still and I just breathe for a moment without going into deep meditation, but if I just ask myself, what is it that we're being pulled into? What is it that that we're returning to? It's always the same answer I get. It's love. And it's like the world has come out of alignment with love. Like it's so polarized. That's not fucking love, right? It's something else. 
but that's not love, right? People don't want war. You know, people don't want corruption. People are, like most people are not profiteering, right? There's a very small percentage of people that are, that are corrupt and that are manipulating other people. But most people are genuinely good. Most people have other people's interests at heart. Maybe not everybody, but most people do. At least I, I feel that in my heart. I feel that to be true. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but I feel that. I feel that when you take the time to get to know someone, most people are really good. Maybe misunderstood, right? <laughs> you know, maybe misunderstood, maybe, maybe wounded, right? Maybe really hurt and wounded because of the shit that they've gone through in their life, you know? But I, I've come to think like that, you know, one of, th one of the things I teach in my training is like that even, even the shit that you experience in your life, is the manure for your evolution. It's the manure for your growth. It's the manure for your change and transformation. It's what you get to grow out of. It's what you get to grow in it. Manure is great for growing stuff, right? Any farmer will tell you. I mean, look, if, if all over Europe, farmers are taking their tractors and pouring manure on... Uh, parliament buildings you know that has to be saying that people are not happy right people are not happy they're not happy with the way things are being run with the way things are being organized and like even even the food we're eating right like if 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 the food were if the companies producing the food and the, and the governments and every and the food industry was based on love right we'd be eating a whole lot healthier, you know? And there, there was like, um, I forget what it was, but there was something I was buying today just in the grocery store. And I noticed like that um, it was something healthy. What was it? Oh, I can't think what it was, but it was like, a, it was like, a, it was like a $6 vegetable. And at the same time on the other shelf, like not far away, it was a small grocery store. And on the other side of the shelf, there was like Nutella for four. I just happened to notice it was like 450, right? The Nutella was cheaper than the vegetables. Like there's something wrong with that, right? Like that's not right. Like that, that unhealthy food is cheaper than healthy food. Like it's, there's something wrong with that, right? So that's why I say like, you know, if you feel like stressed, if you feel worn out, if you feel done with, with the system and stuff, I think that that's the healing that the world is in right now and that you're not alone, you know, that you're not, you're not like, it's not just you, that I think that most people are probably feeling it that can feel. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Boom. <laughs> most people can feel it that can feel, you know? And I mean, at the same time, like I, I always say in healing too, it's, it's not about just feeling good. It's about getting good at feeling, right? Like healing is feeling, right? So we have to feel all the things. We gotta, we gotta acknowledge them. If we don't acknowledge what we're feeling, then we stay stuck in illness and sickness. We stay stuck in the past, right? And so if we don't, acknowledge like even our regrets right the things that we regret from the past like if we don't acknowledge them we're destined to stay stuck to them and so even those the things from the past are they're trying to purge out of us but how can we purge them if we don't even recognize that they're still happening in the present <laughs> fireworks you know that's an aha moment <laughs> you know See, what an aha moment is like, I'm not telling you anything you don't know if it's you're remembering, right? Like you're remembering like, yeah, it's like, yeah, sometimes it's like we know deep inside us what truth is, what authenticity is, what alignment is. And we know deep inside us what is love. And therefore, we also know what it isn't. We also know what's out of alignment. We also know what isn't right. 
And we know when a politician gets up on stage and they lie through their teeth, we fucking know that they're doing it, right? And so the, the great purge that we're all in, that we're clearing out, is realizing how, how crazy the world is and this incredible journey that we're on at the same time here, experiencing the world. I mean, it's weird that I could also say at the same time that I say the world is crazy, that I could also say, isn't it fucking great being alive right now? <laughs> like, you know, you might be like, no, but it's kind of, at the very least, if it's not great, isn't it interesting, <laughs> right? Like it's definitely not boring. No one, no one can say life is boring right now, right? Like I don't think, I don't think that'd be fair to say that life is boring. It's anything but, right? It's a lot of things. It's definitely not boring. It's what's going to happen next, right? We're either waiting for, think about it, we're waiting for either an alien invasion, a zombie apocalypse, you know, Look, every, I'm just putting it out there. Every zombie movie begins with people taking vaccines. Just saying, just saying, right? Sorry, you know, I probably get banned now from Instagram. But, but in any case, like whether it's UFOs or, or aliens, it's almost like if it can happen, it's probably going to happen, right? Like it's, uh, who knows? At the same time, you know, what I was saying to you was that, uh, and I know we've hit our hour now, so I, I understand if you need to run, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going anyway. I'm not going to, there's no charge for overtime. You're, you're totally, stay where you are, stay in your seat. You're fine. You're fine. It's all good. It's all good. But you no, know, put your wallet away. It's fine. It's fine. Um, But in terms of, in terms of like, where we are alive at this time and there, there's the outer world and that outer world of course it has an effect on you it can't not right like you can't not be affected by the outer world but i think what healing does and i think what learning healing and understanding healing and bringing healing into your life both mentally emotionally physically spiritually is that i think it gives you more tools to cope with life you know it gives you more abilities and capabilities it's the best way i would put it probably if i was to sum it into a word is resilience it gives you more resilience because probably without resilience you know if the world continues to get as crazy as it's been getting if that continues on for the next four years you know we're probably not going to make it right like there, there's one thing that's inevitable is debt, right? There's no cure for debt. You know, it's inevitable. It's coming, right? But I think what we can do is that while we're here and while we're alive, we can make the best feck in life that we can for ourselves, right? We can, we can tap in and we can tune in and we can vibrate. What is it that we want to bring forward with this life? And a lot, well, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that if you can influence your health with your mind, and you can, and you can influence your health with your emotions, and you can, make no mistake, you can, right? If you can influence your health with your attention, then you can also influence the things outside of you by giving them your attention. And when we give our attention to fear, we lower our vibration and we attract more of that low vibration. I like to call it a crap magnet. And a crap magnet will always attract more crappy things because it's a crap magnet. That's what it attracts, right? So, when people are feeling shitty, they'll find lots of more shitty things to feel shitty about, right? So how can we, how can we acknowledge, acknowledge that the world is crazy and at the same time not lose our center? At the same time, 
how do we find our, how do we not only not lose our center, how do we use it as fuel to empower ourselves? How do we use it as fuel to, to reclaim ourselves, to reclaim our own health, to reclaim our own sovereignty, to reclaim our own freedoms, to reclaim our own mind and our heart, right? Like if, if we're aware that our thoughts and our feelings are affecting our health and we become aware that our thoughts and our feelings are affecting the collective consciousness by lowering or raising the collective energy. So when we go into fear, we lower the collective energy. And when we go into love, we raise the collective energy. And it's like a tuning fork. It's like a tuning fork, my friends. We're always tuning each other. And so my goal today, my mission, my purpose today in every cell of my being, my, my innate goal and purpose is just to uplift you. It's just to tune you in to a more positive way, to open your mind, to open your abilities, to open your heart. At the same time, not denying what's happening. We're not in a river in Egypt. Denial, just in case you didn't get it the first time. A river in Egypt, I, I saw you looking up there. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I'm just waiting for that to land, right? <laughs> a river in Egypt, Denial, you know, denial, right? Boom. Sorry, it's it's bad when you have to explain it to people. No, I'm, I'm kidding, but not kidding. But it's like, my goal is like to inspire you, like while not denying what's happening, like in, in fact, we've done the opposite, acknowledging what's happening, you know, at, at least in a glossy kind of way, you know, you can dig deeper yourself, you know, dig deep, right? You get down the rabbit hole, you'll never come out. But as we, as we start to acknowledge, look, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the system and the systems. There's something wrong with, you know, the, the, the pharmaceutical industry, the, the, the political industry, the banking industry, the, the education industry, the, the medical industry, like every industry, you know, seems to have come far away from love, you know. And I think that healing, and I, I don't mean specifically me doing healing, but healing like what the universe is bringing forth is it's bringing healing back to us now more than ever before. Because in response to the chaos, there's also the solution that comes. And the very thing that is taking us away, the technologies and everything that's pulling us away, there's also technology upgrading inside of us to return us back to our freedoms, to return us back to our light and our Christ consciousness and our, our fullness and our intelligence of all that we are. And just as things are pulling us away, there's also something pulling us into the best version of ourselves. The version where we are the best version of ourselves, the happiest, the healthiest, the most loving version of ourselves. And so... Um, I know I'm going way over time, but there is no time. Like, really, is there time? Think about it, folks. Is there really time? <laughs> you know. With that said, I'll wrap it up soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, this is the time for healing. And I've always said, if you don't do your healing, whether, it, whether you want to call her Mother Gaia, Mother Nature, Father Sky, God, the Holy Spirit, whatever name that you want to give it, there's powers greater than us, not the government, powers greater than us that 
have one purpose for us. I think this great spirit that has put us into this life has one purpose for us, our liberation and our freedom. There's, there's one thing that our soul wants for us to be free and for us to be liberated. And so it's like, if you don't consciously make the choice to do it, it'll be unconsciously done for you. Because I think the messages are getting louder and louder. The world is getting crazier and crazier. And we're being asked or pushed into reclaiming our sovereignty, our power, our abilities, our natural healing abilities. We're being pushed back into the ecosystem, back into eating properly, back into breathing properly, back into drinking water where there's only water in it and not a whole load of other shit. Like we're, we're coming, we're cleansing, we're purging, we're purifying, and we are returning back to our light. And what I've always shared with people in healing is when you take all the, all the crap out of the way, right there, that's where your authentic self is. You don't have to make up who you are. Not like the ego. You don't have to make shit up. That's what the ego does, right? You don't have to make anything up. Your authentic self is you, right? Nothing, nothing can cover it up. Nothing can stop it. No, nothing can prevent it from coming forward. And I think now we're in a place that we've never been before. A place where, where people are feeling the pull to wake up, feeling the pull to heal. And it's getting louder, folks. And that resilience, we're getting strong. Do you realize how, how strong we are? The fact that we're still here after four years of What word should we give it? You know, I'm just going to put it out there. Four years of a pandemic, four years of craziness, four years of, of trying to close us down, suppress us and make us smaller. We're getting fucking louder and bigger and stronger and more in our light. And it's like all paths lead to us moving to liberation and freedom all paths lead there and nothing no matter what any uh billionaires you heard of bill gates trying to block out the sun right like he's all the chemtrails trying to block out the sun. that's not a conspiracy he's actually doing that right it's trying to block out the sun well why would they be trying to block out the sun well they're saying well it's 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 because of climate change. It's nothing to do with climate change, right? The sun has always been there. The planet has always been here. It's been here a long time before us. It'll be here a long time after we're gone. It's not about that. There's always an agenda. When you strip all of the bullshit, all the agenda away, the sun gives us our energy. The sun gives us our energy. The sun wakes us up. When the sun hits your pituitary gland right here, when the sun hits this point, it starts to open up crystals in your pina gland and it opens up your consciousness. And as your consciousness opens up, you see the connections between all the things. You're turning back to the, the fullness, the connection, right? And so we need sun, right? <laughs> like we need to be out in the sun. No, I don't, I don't want to say like looking at the sun, but there, there's definitely practices that you can do where you can look at the sun like at sunrise and sunset, you know, of course, like maybe sunrise might be a bit early for people, but there's an opportunity during sunrise, sunset to look into the sun for at least maybe five to 15 minutes with time. You can build it up and lock in into the sun like it restores your body. It energizes your body. Right. And it's a natural. It's part of the ecosystem. It's like all everything we need to heal is being given to us. And so I'm going to wrap it up now with, I think like opportunities come along, opportunities knocking. And I've had the opportunity to share the work that I do, bioenergy healing with people. And, you know, just like, I hope tonight that just like, even just sharing a few of the concepts of bioenergy, I hope that it helps you. 
I hope that you get to see um, that um, that you don't have to do these things on your on loan. That there's people out here to help and support you. Um, I have different training courses. I have different sessions. I have like um, different things available uh, to support you in in the journey. And um, I'm so grateful for all the people that help me and support me on my journey. And I feel very gifted to be able to support other people in their journey. And, and in the journey, what it is, is that it's a journey of helping people to get out of suffering. That's what it is. That's what the true spiritual path is. Helping people get out of suffering, right? It's one thing to help yourself get out of suffering. Oh, the quality of your life gets a whole lot better when you stop suffering, you know. But it's even a greater gift gift to help other people, to help other people get out of suffering. That's There's something even more beautiful, more magical about that. And then to teach other people how to help other people get out of suffering, oh, that's even better, you know. It's even better when you see other people helping other people. And I think that's, you know, what I was saying about like, we can go into fear or we can go into love. And when we go into love, we start to reclaim our health, you know. And like I said, we can start to look for support. We can look for help. We can look for opportunities, opportunities to heal, opportunities to help ourselves. And I think what bioenergy offers is it offers the opportunity to integrate what's happening in your energy system during these times to help relieve and remove illness and sickness from your body and to return you back to love. And that's really the work, right? It's a return to love. <laughs> you know, I should make that a slogan, the return to love, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's so obvious, right? Like that's what healing is. It's just bringing people back to love. Everyone deserves more love, not less. Right. You know, so stay strong, my friends, <laughs> you know, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for, um, thank you for receiving this, uh, this broadcast, <laughs> you know, may it act as a tuning fork, tuning your body into the highest version of yourself, you know, and if you want to check out my work on the zoom, please, um, copy that link there it's for a link tree and that'll bring you to my services if you're on instagram um you'll actually see in my bio it'll have um a link tree and that has all my services that i offer and if you're checking this out on youtube um you'll also go down to the to the information and you'll find a link to link tree i offer private sessions in person and distant so no excuse, anywhere in the world, you can you can get some sessions. I also have a list of practitioners on my website. So you have people available to you, maybe in your area, or your location, you can uh, go on practitioners in the website and maybe find someone close to you. You know, or if you wanna work with me, um, I do in-person sessions in Vancouver or uh, online sessions as well. I also offer uh group healing sessions so if you'd like to get some healing for cheaper you know um you know uh what can be better than than a free seminar pretty good huh <laughs> right but it's like if you want to get some healing for for cheap we do a group healing for 55 dollars, and that one is coming up on april 22nd and it's really beautiful and powerful group healing and it really brings you into you like what I call the fifth dimension and you'll understand it if you do it you'll understand what the fifth dimension is with the group healing it's pretty friggin' powerful I also have a healing and breathing evening coming up in person in Vancouver on May 7th and that's a beautiful opportunity to heal and breed in a small group and uh, that's available and I also have a level one bioenergy training, which can be accessed to my website 24 seven. So at any time you could go onto the website, uh, purchase a level one bioenergy and immediately start learning bioenergy techniques to put for yourself, your family, your friends. 
And then I also offer a level two practitioner training. And that's my that's my main course. That's I love I love teaching the level two. I love helping other people become healers. You know, because the one thing if you like if you want to heal yourself, get healing someone else, right? Take the attention away from you, right? That's the best way to it's the best way to get into when you're healing other someone else, you're already your body is already accepting the vibration that you're healing. Right. So it's like when we take sometimes we focus too much on ourselves. Right. When we take the attention of ourselves and we want to learn it for others. I don't know. There's something really magical in that. I see that when people when people learn it to do it for other people, they always heal themselves. They always go into deep healing inside themselves. And so I, I love bringing that course to people because I think it, it really clears out the years of suffering and torment that we carry inside ourselves <clears throat> all the family's lineage all of the the past that gets carried forward so it really helps to to purge all of that and i think what if i if there's something that i i think i bring to people it's people get lighter they get freer you know and i think that i think i think that's my purpose here is just to you know, to lighten things up, right? And, you know, some people call that a light worker. I don't know, sounds very airy-fairy, but, you know, I'm a very practical person. It's just like, look, if you're carrying a whole load of baggage around with you, it gets friggin' heavy. If you put it down, you're going to get a whole lot lighter. You can you can do it yourself, absolutely friggin' lutely, but, you know, there's often a lot of times where you can't do it yourself because you often don't see your own stuff, Right? You know, there, you have a blind spot. We often don't see our own stuff. And I think that maybe that's part of the, like, spirit knows that and, like, does that on purpose so that we come together, so that we come together to heal, right? You know, so anyway, that's my thoughts for you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Our level two starts in September, in uh, September 20th registration is open now and there's a couple of bonuses right now if you uh register for level two you can um you can literally take the cost of the level one away from it and you can take the price of five sessions away from it so a uh, really great offer on right now thank you for listening thank you for tuning in everybody i'm gonna firstly see how i stop this uh instagram let me do this one first okay Instagram over and out. Now I'm going to stop uh, the YouTube one. Let me do that.